evening! It's a late night special. Welcome along, gang. It's Wednesday, June the 7th. 2017 and a warm welcome along to tonight's United Kingdom talk coming as always live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire in full colour and with working sound as well today boys and girls we've really pushed the boat out yesterday now a lot of people thought we were saving money the other day by not actually switching on the microphones which did indeed save me about two pence it really did I tell you what I haven't saved money tonight my God, well, I don't know of one single occasion where I flicked, 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 boys and girls, the heating on at the beginning of June. Has anyone else done that tonight? Come on, put your hands up. You have, haven't you? I, I, can, I can tell. I can tell. I saw steam coming out of your vent, coming out your pipes out your house. I did see the steam coming out. Yes. Don't fool me. Now, to be honest, if I was in, in here on my own today, I wouldn't have done it myself. But best friend Ron was around today uh, because uh, I, I, I cooked a bit of a meal today. It's been a very, very good day. I have to tell you, a wonderful day. I have been to my second Slimming World meeting. I battled. I couldn't even cycle there today because it was so, pouring with rain this morning. Was it pouring with rain where you were? And the wind. I thought it was like autumn today. The wind was cold. The rain was beating down on me, boys and girls. I thought I'd committed some great sin. You know, I thought I'd upset Vivian at church because she got a bit upset Sunday, Vivian at church. She's the lady I sit next to her down the Corpus Christi in Wokingham. And I love Vivian. She's become a very, very good friend of mine. But if anyone makes a mistake on the altar or anywhere, she does like to point it out on me. Now, the, whoever was doing the reading or something on Sunday, there was a little bit in there that said Jew. But instead of said Jew, they said Jesus. And straight away, I got a nudge in the ear, Chris. What? Did you hear that? Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> I love Vivian. She has something very, very special there. And we, we put the world to rights, you know, afterwards as we're walking out. She's fantastic. She, she, she couldn't be more opposite from me. I don't know what it is. I've, I've got a certain thing for people, I think, who quite often who are opposite from me. I think one of those people is possibly Diane Abbott. Now, do you want me to do Diane Abbott first or Slimming World first? That's the thing. <laughs> do you know i think we're going to do diane abbott first let's just say hello to some uh, early people who are with us to, uh, this evening boys and girls uh, good evening gustav morning gustav very drunk last night dear <laughs> gustav was at the karaoke at central station actually it was the night before wasn't it uh on the on monday night and took a picture of me standing on the phone on 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 the stage uploaded it to his facebook and said look the homeless are in tonight <laughs> I think they're probably I think they're probably better dressed than me to be honest Gustav <laughs> You do make me laugh dear you really do uh, Danny Davis rather disappointed with Danny uh, he was supposed to do an experiment with ice with an ice cube Now unfortunately I can't remember the experiment but he couldn't do it because he couldn't get any ice You must have a freezer in the house haven't you or a little, not necessarily a, a whole freezer, but what's that little thing at the top of the um, the ice box in a fridge? If you've got a fridge, surely you've got an Haven't all fridges got ice boxes at the top? Oh, no, actually, I haven't, have I? I've got a fridge and a freezer separately, so I don't know. Uh, Peter Hyde is with us. Hello, Peter. Nice to see you. Gary W. There's Gary. Uh, just got home from work again. New shift to killer, but hopefully I can get to Central Station to miss, to sing. You're missing us, aren't you? You're missing us. I know you're missing. You're not missing me, are you, Gary? It's 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 Irish Mary. It's Roy. It's Ray. It's Chris. You're missing the crowd, but not me. I know, Gary. I know. I know. I'm, I'm hurt. I can't. I can't lie. I'm hurt that I'm not missed. Uh, Joey's there. Hello, Joey. Adam T's there. Adam the plumber. Greetings. Um, oh, Dan is not calling in tonight. That not a good idea for you to call in at night time, Danny, uh, because, you know, people are a bit tired already and you will just about send them off with that monotone voice of yours, dear. Please don't call in at night, dear. 
Why are you still up? Anyway, haven't you got a Greg's the Baker's to open tomorrow morning? What are people going to do about their pasties? No pasties going in my stomach, thank you very much. No. Hmm. David Jackson, good evening, sir. Um... How much weight have you lost? Peter wants to know. I don't know if we should do... I don't know if we should do the Slimming World first or the Diana but first. What do you want me to do? Slimming World first? Anthony. Hello, Anthony. You're a new, aren't you? Are you new to the show? Welcome along, Anthony. Just our little bit of fun that we do at various different times during a day. Uh, Pete's there. Hello, Pete from Brazil. A little while since I've seen you. Greetings, Pete. Hope the weather's nice there. It's been dreadful here. Ghastly weather outside. It's oak. Okay. Actually, it's quiet and down now. It's chilly tonight. And as I said at the top of the show there, I have actually turned the... Oh, hang on. Why am I getting notifications on there? I shouldn't get those. Hang on. Can I turn those off? Uh, um, don't show? No. Why am I getting notifications on this blooming thing? Oh, I don't want that. That's just going to annoy me, isn't it? We are adding a new feature. Uh... Oh, that's strange. I must must find a way of turning that off. That is very... Ah, there we are. Disabled notifications. Thank you. Done. That's sorted out. Uh, yes, I hope you're, you're all right there in Brazil. We've had an awful lot of rain and, and a, actually quite a cold wind today. Although the wind has died down. The old trees... I'm so disappointed. I've got some um, lilies at the front and they were so tall. And a load of them have blown over, unfortunately. So, never mind. Uh, maybe they grow back up again. Um, not Diane Ab, Diab. Is that what is that what the young the youth are calling her? Di Diab, Diab. It's not Diana, but Diab. <laughs> she is just a total nutty, useless person. There must be something Diane Abbott's good at. Anyway, I'll ask you that a bit later on. Hello to Tim. Uh, greetings, Tim. Can you wish Malcolm, my friend, happy birthday? He's fifty today. Happy birthday, Malcolm. Uh, is with them and uh, he's with him and his lovely wife having a very late dinner. Oh, you are having a late dinner, aren't you, Tim? Happy birthday, Malcolm. All right, 50 today. You're younger than me. And let me tell you, you go over 50, it's fine. Honestly, I went over 40. It's that old thing. Oh, oh, I'm gonna get, oh, I'm going to be 40 next week. Oh, I'm going to be 40 tomorrow. And you get there and it's fine. It's absolutely fine. 50 is fine, Tim. I'm 54. Happy birthday to you. All right, Malcolm. Uh, Anthony says, La Latvia loves you. We have a statue. Oh, it's you. I remember you. Did you know that? I am extremely popular in Latvia. Anthony, there is a sta... I need a new chair, don't I? Can you hear this? Oh, how unprofessional. Is that still squeaking? <laughs> There's a statue of me in Latvia. Did you know that? Yeah, it's true. Um... Hello to Lily. Hello, Lily, darling. I haven't seen you for a while. Come and sing for me soon. All right. Uh, Dino's with us this evening. Greetings, Dina. Pete says it's uh, ten past nine. Uh, raining there as well. Oh, are you going to be on international television, Pete? What are you going to be on then? Are you going to be a, a, as big a star as I am here in the UK? I can't go shopping anymore. Oh, it's terrible. People touch and, and you can see them. They nudge each other. Oh, is that Chris Whitton over there? You can see them doing it. Why haven't I bought in a glass of water? Oh, dear. Uh, greetings to Mark Anthony Eden. You have been quiet for a while, Mark. Greetings. Um, and the weather has damaged poor Lily's gazebo. Yes, everything's falling apart out there. All my lilies have gone down, Lily. I do hope you don't droop like that, my love. Dreadful. Dreadful. Hello to Kevin Webster. Um, look at... No, don't bring any chocolate in, Gary. You can bring chocolate in. And you can give it to me, and I promise you I won't touch it. I'm very, very good at that. Little Jack Patterson. Hello, Jack. I'm very, very... In fact, you know DJ Chris, who sings at the karaoke? He opened in front of me, in full view of me, a bar of Galaxy on Monday night. And he didn't just do that. He saw me looking, and he broke a, a square off and brought it up to me. Go on, have a bit. No, I don't want it. Go on, just have it. It's only one bit. No, the Lord tempted, the devil tempted me and I pushed my hand back, darling. That chocolate did not go anywhere near my mouth. And you know what? It didn't bother me either. I've got to that stage already. That's not bad, is it? Do you know, I might have to go in the bathroom and get a, get a glass of water in a minute. We'll see. Um, <laughs> oh, look, everyone's saying happy birthday to Malcolm. How nice is that? Gary, Peter, Anthony. That's nice. 
That's nice. Is that a golden birthday? 50? I'm not sure it is. Hello, Lizu. Hello, Lizu. You all right, darling? Now, Lizu is like, I think she's management at the Camden Eye. Now, she she, she wasn't uh, she wasn't there the last week I was there. Of course, I wasn't there this week because I was at a bar mitzvah. I've got to tell you about that as well. There's a lot to chat about tonight. There really is. Uh, what's Peter say? I've got a nice leather computer chair if you want it, Chris. Oh, no, we can't have leather in the house, dear. Do you know what the animals go through to make anything leather? We can't be having leather chair in here. Is it nice, though? <laughs> I used to have one in here years ago and I got this one. This one's actually much more... No, it's not as comfortable. The leather one was very comfortable and I had it for about 10 years and then it's got like this spring, like a like a post spring thing and the spring went and I couldn't replace it, unfortunately, so I had to dump that in the end. All right. Uh, Ian Ellis, greetings, Ian. Hope your dog's all right. Eloise, hello, Eloise. Your cat's still behind me at the moment. We change these things behind us now and again, but at the moment, Eloise sent me this cat. About a year ago. Isn't it lovely, my light-up cat? Gustav said he was just tipsy, just tipsy. I don't want to be getting a reputation. <laughs> what do you mean, don't want to be getting a reputation? I think it's a bit late, late, late for that, my love. Yes. What do you want first, Diane Abbott or Slimming World? I'll give you Slimming World first, and we'll do Diane Abbott a little bit later on. All right, boys and girls? So, so. Um, this morning, well, let me just refer to my notes. This morning, it was my second week at Slimming World. So, of course, on the first week, she does a little bit of a chat and you learn all about it and how it works. And they weigh you. And I weighed in at 13 stone, 13 and a half pounds last Tuesday. OK, so that's where I weighed in. Now, when you go to Slimming World, I've, I've, I'm kind of getting used, getting into it now. You go in. And immediately, people you saw the week before are saying hello to you. Oh, hello, how are you? How did you do this week? Well, I'm just queuing up to weigh myself now. So you queue up and you pay your money, £4.95. Or you can sign up for so many weeks, you see. Uh, I actually ended up, I, 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 instead of paying four ninety five, I think I signed up for six weeks. You can do six weeks, 12 weeks, 10 weeks, whatever. And then it, it gets a little bit cheaper. Um, so I weighed my, uh, so I paid my money, handed in my food diary. We get this food diary thing, which I've shown you before. And then you go and weigh yourself. So how do you think you did, said the lady to me. I said, oh, I'm hoping to lose a couple of pounds, you know. Anyway, she weighed me. I have lost, are you ready for this? Three and a half pounds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, how much is a bag of sugar? How many pounds? It's a kilo, a bag of sugar, isn't it? So how many kilos to the pounds? So I'm now 13 stone, 10 pounds. Three and a half pounds in a week. And let me tell you, I have not been hungry. I've stuck rigidly to that Slimmer's World plan. It's not a diet, it's a plan. OK, I've stuck rigidly to that, except there were two occasions last week where I couldn't because I went out to dinner on two occasions. Once to that wonderful bar mitzvah that I went uh, for Joe, son of a very good friend of mine, David Rosen. And also I was taken out by the manager of the place I used to work at in Clapham, sort of as a kind of uh, uh, a thank you for the for the years I've worked with him. Uh, and I had uh, I didn't have the pizza in the end because that's 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 a, that's a pizza is a big no yo. A big no-no. Uh, I think I had, uh, what did I have? Some sort of pasta thing, which probably still wasn't good, but it wasn't as bad as that. It was a damage limitation type thing, you know. Now, why have I just fired up this computer? What, what, have I, what was I just about to look at? Was I about to look at something then? Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. Um, can't remember. OK, so anyway, so I weighed myself, uh, lost three and a half pounds. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Ah, yes. For, so kilos to pounds. So kilos to LBS to pounds. Let's have a look. So one kilo is two pounds. So uh, if, you, if you hold a bag of sugar, is a bag of sugar a kilo? Or isn't it? Oh, I don't know what a kilo is. What have I got in here? Has anything got a weight? There's, no, there's nothing really. Well, I, I just assume that's quite a lot. I thought, I thought a bag of sugar was a kilo. I might be wrong, but a kilo is two pounds, or is a bag of sugar a pound? I don't know. 
No, actually, I think bag of sugar is half a kilo, isn't it? I could. Can someone have a look? Not at the small. Sh have anyone got a cupboard open somewhere? Not the small ones, right? The large. There's three sizes of sugars. There's a little one. Let's level that back. There's that one in the middle, and there's the great big one. How 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 much does the middle one weigh? Can someone have a look for us and let me know? I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Gustav says, darling, don't think it of it about as sugar. Think of it as a bar of lard because you are hopefully losing fat. And once you begin to think how much fat you are losing and visualise it as lard, it's more encouraging. Oh, it's, oh, it's dreadful lard. Have you looked at a lump of lard? Isn't it disgusting? <laughs> Kevin says, is pizza no good then, Chris? No, it's not, Kev. That's one of the worst things. Uh, on the Slimming World diet, as a man, you're allowed about 20, 25 sins per day. I don't I, I don't want to go into it. It's, it's quite long winded, this sin thing. But basically, everything you eat has a sin value. But there are a lot of things that have no sins. So what you try and do is eat the food with no sins at all. And then if you have sins, you must add them up and never let them get to, as a man, I think it's about 25 a day. Women, 15. I don't know why there's a difference. It must be due to the metabolism thing. I have been getting four, five, six sins a day except on the two days where I went out for dinner, where I estimated at the maximum 25. I thought it was best to, to overestimate rather to underestimate, you know. Then the, the, two day, the day before and the day after, I tried to make up for that by having, well, one day I had no sins at all. In fact, today I've had no sins. And yet I'm sitting here absolutely stuffed tonight. I've had a big dinner tonight. I'll tell you about that as we go through. Uh, Gary says three and a half pounds is 1.5 kilos. Yeah, but what what is that bag of sugar? You know, the, the Tate and Lyle sugar, the middle one. That's the normal size one that everyone ba buys. Is that one kilo or is that 500 grams? I'm not quite sure. Mm, not quite sure. Uh, uh, it, I'm sorry, Lily. Incorrect, darling. I'm about 14. I was, at, I was nearly 14 stone. I need to be about 12. You haven't seen me with my clothes off. I have, my love. However, if you want me to send you a picture, then just send in your phone number. And I'll say, that's what all the lads, all the kids do that now, don't they? All the teenagers send each other bits of their photos of their bits and pieces all the time. That's all they do. They got their phones loaded with pictures of anatomy things. Yes. Ah, Heidi says it's a kilogram. Thank you, Heidi. So I've lost a bag and a half of sugar. That's the weight. You just hold that. I think that's, that's about a bag and a half of sugar, I would guess. Uh, thank you, Heidi. Hello to Lewis, who's with us tonight. It is a kilo, yep. Yeah. So two pounds a kilo. So bag and a half of sugar. If you hold a, a bag and a half of sugar, that's the weight I've lost this week. I'm very, very pleased. Yes, yeah, stop the pizza, Kevin. Stop the pizza. Very, very important to stop the pizza. Thank you. Um, and it's 2.225 pounds to a bag of sugar. So uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I am really, really pleased um, with, with, with what I've lost there. So after they've weighed you, you then go and sit down. And there, was a, there must have been about 25, 30 of us there. There were two new ladies who joined. And as, as people did to me, I said, oh, hello, are you new today? I said, oh, yeah, well, go and get yourself a cup of tea and all that. And everyone kind of joins in. And I know people already know there's Peter. He's lost a hell of a lot of weight. He's about... He must be about 73, 74 years old, and he's a very, very tall man. And he sits in the corner, and I sit a few along from him, and I sit next to another lady. I don't know what her name is, actually. And she was nice, and she was telling me, have I done the chips yet? And I said, well, I thought you're not allowed to have chips. She said, well, you can. Uh, what you do is you get a potato, you cut it up to whatever you want it. You spray it with that fry light stuff, stick it in the oven. About 30 minutes. So I did those tonight with my main dinner. Absolutely delicious. And instead of tomato sauce, which contains sins, I have vinegar. No sins. Delicious. Delicious. No sins. Because you haven't fried them in oil. Oven chips are okay, but then nothing is as good as doing everything from scratch. And I'm loving it. I've cooked meals tonight. I'll come over to that in a minute. Um, so then we all sit down and she brings out a little little iPad. Linda. Linda's in charge of the Wokenham Slimmers world. 
And uh, she's she's lovely, she is. And she's all made up and lovely hair and all this. And she's got a picture of herself, because, of course, they've been on it as well, of before and after. And, my God, what a difference she looks. You know, she was a big girl. And then she's, like, just beautiful. Uh, Linda is about... She's probably a bit younger than me. I reckon around about... 48, sort of 49 age, maybe a bit younger than that, actually. But she's lovely and she's nice and friendly and she doesn't judge anyone. So then she gets out a little pad thing and she starts talking to us. She said, well, let's see how you've all done this week. And she might she'd call out her name. Uh, well done. You this week have lost one and a half pounds. And everyone claps. And it's all very friendly and lovely. And she said... Um, and she would then say to them, so what have you done this week? And, and they'll answer back, um, wh whatever they've done. Well, I've tried to cut this out and the other. And then she might say, OK, um, uh, Jane over there. Oh, not so good this week. You've put on a pound. Do you know what you did wrong? And then straight away they say, yes, well, the children have been on sc off school this week. So it's been down to the burger shop and all this. I haven't been able to watch myself. OK. And then she says, well, you know, you, you know how to get back on it again. She said, and they say yes and all this. And um, everyone gets a little clap. It, it's just nice. It's just nice. And yes, indeed, some people have put on a little bit. Some people have lost a little bit. Uh, some people have lost a lot. At three and a half pounds, I was second at, at wait. Uh, there's another lady actually who was at the session before. Wait till I tell you how much she lost in a week. You will not believe me. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, I lost three and a half pounds. There was only one person above me who lost four pounds in a week. Fantastic. And this is all sticking to the... I cannot praise it enough. And I have to say to you, there's been a lot of... A, a couple of people over the week who I've told people about this. And I said, oh, you're wasting your time with that. It doesn't work. Hello, I've just weighed myself. It does. And there are people there and they go every couple of weeks. They are there to maintain their weight. They've got down to their target level. Because when you get down to your target level, it becomes free. You don't pay anymore. You just go every couple of weeks, reweigh yourself and check that you're not moving up or down and you're sticking to the thing. See, at the moment, I have got to eat less than what I would normally eat anywhere to lose the weight. Once you're down to what you want to be, then you can start perhaps reintroducing things carefully. Carefully. Once I've got down to my weight, right, you, and you don't want to go any further because that's easy to do as well. You could quite easily get um, that, uh, get anorexic. I think they probably keep an eye on that as well. Once you get down to that weight, you can start eating, a, you know, now and again a bar of chocolate, now and again a bag of crisps. Because you don't want to keep it going down and down and down. I'll just be like, like this, this, this thin thing sitting in front of you then. I don't want to look like someone like, um, oh, who's that miserable old cow, Marita Beckham? What's his name? What's her name? The one in the Spice Girls. I mean, she just looks dreadful. I mean, how thin do you want to look? I can't stand those those models. You know the models on 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 the tellies and all that with, with, with their ribs showing. What the hell is all that about? It just looks horrible. Wouldn't want to look like that. We even want to get to that set level. So then uh, my name was read out. Three and a half pounds. Everyone clapped. And uh, they said, "How did you do it?" I said, "Well, I I just stuck to the sins and." Ate mainly free food. I've, I've actually changed quite a lot. For example, in the morning, I used to have bran flakes with gold top milk. And usually a chopped up banana on the chop. That was probably about seven or eight sins with the gold top milk. Eight sins. Remember, I'm allowed 25 a day. I have changed that for baked beans and eggs and onions. Now, not always the same. Sometimes I might have a scrambled eggs. Sometimes I might fry them, but with with the spray light. You only need pss, pss, and I've got this um, ceramic frying pan, so you don't need much in there anyway. Just a couple of little sprays. Put their eggs in and 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 let them let them cook. Value zero sins. So it's interesting, isn't it? That the the very items you thought you weren't allowed to eat, that you would prefer to eat, are actually the ones you should be eating. Not the stuff what's come out of a box. 
I've spent years eating out of boxes. Oh, you know, just open that, you know, put it here, and bing, off it goes, or pour it in. And I think this is where we're all going wrong, eating out of boxes and adding salt and sugar and oil to everything. So that's what I have in the morning. The lunch, well, again, that tend to be something that I'd open in a box. and But between lunch and that, I would have had a bag of crisps and stuff like that, you see. Lunch today, well, I, I ran out of time to cook my own lunch, but we were out in a place because after there, so, so we went around everyone else, and then uh, I, I got there about half 11. It's one o'clock. One o'clock, we would finished. I managed to, and it's very close to my church as well. So I'm able to park in the church car park. Oh, yes, it's because I'm a member, you see. And you put a little note in your window. Parish, no, nine o'clock, mass Sundays, Chris Reardon, and my phone number. Zero, so, oh, I don't want to give it to you. No, you see. Oh, I'm a member, love. If it was my mate, he wouldn't be allowed to park in there, dear. And if I did see him, I'd ring. I'd be straight on the phone to the priest. Oh, hello, Father. Yeah, there's someone parked in our car, but he doesn't come to church. Slap a ticket on there. Thank you, Father. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, no, terrible. So one o'clock came, jumped in the car, um, popped back in there to get some money. And I wanted to go out and get ingredients so I could start cooking doing more stuff. I've already last week done this rice, vegetable rice risotto, which was absolute delicious and so filling. Again, zero sins. Remember, you're allowed 25 a day as a man, 15 as a woman. So um, the ladies also told us that Slim as well do some frozen ready meals, which again are sin free. So, But they're only available at Iceland. Now, there's no Iceland around here. Uh, the nearest one was Woodley, and I've never been to Woodley before. So we jumped in the car. I went to pick my mate up. First of all, uh, and we're driving along here, and we come to... Uh, th there's there's a, a, a specific junction uh, just off the Bracknell Road, what joins the M4. It's further than that. So you, so you go on this Bracknell Road, the A329M, I think it is. You go along there. You can come off at the M4, but you don't come off the M4. The next one down is Winnersh. And the road layout in Winnersh, I can never get the hang of it. It is so complicated. They've got a big multiplex cinema there, the showcase cinema I often go to. And I always lose my way there. It's like a roundabout and you go straight down. But to get over here, you have to go round. And you always go down oh, and you can't then turn right. And you go right down to the other roundabout, round again and oh. It's a nightmare, this road. So, of course, we spent 10 minutes trying to turn right <laughs> to get to a place called Woodley. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Woodley. Uh, so we're going through this the, the English countryside to Woodley. Eventually, we get there and the sat-nav has, has taken me someone completely different. So I stopped and said, can you tell me where Iceland is? Oh, he said, yeah, that'd be with the shops. Just go down there. There's a car park there. So we parked in a car park. It wasn't very dear, the car park. We got off there. And as luck would have it, because we was going to go to Waitrose as well, there was a Waitrose there as well. So we went in there. Uh, I had a list, a shopping list of all these things that I wanted to buy. Lots of spices. Lots of spices I had on my list. Um, fruit and veg stuff. Uh, fat free fromage, fray. Is it called fromage fray? Fra, fra, uh, uh, fat free. Do you know, I don't even know what that is, but it was in one of the recipes I've looked at. I think it was an Indian. I think it was a, a vegetable curry that I've been looking at. So I've got the stuff for that, and I've got the stuff for tonight, which I've already did. I'll, I'll tell you about that. Um, and so we got that in there and then we went to Iceland and immediately the Slimmer's World frozen section is, is right as you come in. And I look in and unfortunately, being a vegetarian, there was like one meal for me there. And it was, again, some sort of uh, curry rice meal, you know, quite large. It was very large, actually, the meal. It was only about two quid in there. Uh, they also had some sin-free sauces, mushroom sauce and tomato sauce. So I got a few of those for the freezer. But I, I do want to try, try and be cooking my stuff from scratch now rather than opening packets and things. So I, we got that. We come out of there and then it was a bit late. So um, fortunately, just across the road, they had a uh, not, not, not across the road, across the sort of square bit. They had like one of those little trucks what sells hot dogs and burgers and things like that. So I had a jacket potato with baked beans, no butter. 
And I think that's the first time I've had a jacket potato with no butter. Do you know, if you, depending on what you put in there, it was fine, actually. I don't think I even noticed the butter wasn't there. Jacket potatoes, baked beans, completely sin-free. So then we drove home. By now, it was about up past four, so I've got home, put my shopping away, cleared the cat mess up again, <laughs> twice today. Um, I had a little sleep, got up about quarter past seven, I think it was, watched a little bit of telly. And at a quarter to uh, eight, I started cooking. Now, when we was in Waitrose, uh, Ronnie spotted, because he was coming over for dinner tonight as well. He's, he's, he's been gone now a little while. Uh, and he chose uh, some mushrooms that I just put in, but you know, pre-prepared. I think they were portobello mushrooms, the great big things with a bit of cheese in the top and all that. So I just shoved those in the oven for about, uh, about 20 minutes for him. And I made, first of all, I made the chips. <clears throat> the chips cut up the potato, a couple of sprays with a fry light, and in the oven. So they came out of the oven first, and we left them in there. I think it said 20 minutes, but we put them in there for 30. So we took them out, and they were really crispy. Oh, they were so nice, especially with a bit of vinegar on. They were so nice. Sin-free. You can eat potatoes on this scheme. Sin-free. It depends how you cook them. Do not cook them in oil. Do not fry them in a frying pan with fat or anything like that. That's how you do them. Cut them up, quick spray, in the oven. Delicious. Salt and pepper or rosemary. I put rosemary on mine. I always like to sprinkle rosemary on the top. I love the smell, don't you, as it comes out the oven. I've got this new oven downstairs. I've had it a few weeks now. But I, the seal around the oven door must be really good. And I keep forgetting to stand back when I open it. Because you, you open it and whoo, this heat comes out. I mean, it singed me eyebrows the other day. Dear me. So I done the chips and I also made for the first time my very own spaghetti ara ara biata sauce. I printed off a menu from the internet. It, there is a Slimmer's World version of this. This wasn't the Slimmer's World one. Um and it's got in it oregano, thyme, basil, garlic cloves. Uh, dried chili peppers. I got all this from Waitrose, you see. Uh, cherry tomato, which did say 400 gram tin of cherry tomatoes, but I bought cherry tomatoes. I didn't read it properly, which often happens. I don't read things properly, really. So I had that. Uh, so uh, 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 balsamic vinegar, um, parmesan cheese. I cut that out. Didn't eat the parmesan cheese, uh, salt and black pepper, olive oil. I didn't use olive oil. Cut that out as well. Okay. And um, and some uh, wholemeal spaghetti I used. So instead of having the olive oil, I got me big pan. Quite a tall. I think it's a stock pot, actually. That's what I use. I got that because it's nice and tall and you know, stuff jumps out otherwise. I doubled everything up. So I've already made tomorrow's dinner as well. Um, I sprayed the, the, the pan, heated that up, chopped up the garlic, shoved in. Oh, I put onions in as well. Extra onions. Because it didn't say onions on here, but I like onions in, in most meals. Uh, I, I cheated with onions. I, I bought the already chopped up ones in a packet. How lazy is that, eh? So onions, garlic, oregano, thyme um, in the pot. Cooked them for a few minutes. Added the cherry tomatoes. Now, of course, I didn't have the liquid because it did say a tin. So I also, fortunately, had in my cupboard some chopped tomatoes. So two tins of those in, chopped tomatoes in water, that is. Cooked them for a while. And um, I think about, about half an hour altogether. It was probably a little bit longer, but I had to delay my food because I was a bit late putting the mushrooms in and Ronnie was coming over. So I just kept it going slowly. Served it up. My God, it was delicious. Absolutely. I, 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 I'm, I'm full up now. And I had dinner. What's the time now? I had dinner at 10 o'clock. I'm still full up now. I had a massive portion. Massive. Sin-free. No sins in any of that. It's the oil and the butter that's doing it. You've got to cut it out, gang, if you want to lose a bit of weight. And he had his mushrooms. And we loved the chips. And, and that was our dinner absolutely delicious so i've uh, decided to do some more cooking now um i've got the same tomorrow i've got the stuff to do a vegetable curry 
and a, well i wrote it down hang on a minute and a, a, i think it was a multi bean there it is a multi bean chili going to do a multi bean chili it's great and it's so filling you don't need biscuits and things. I used to, so, you know, I'd have my dinner, then I'd have half a packet of biscuits afterwards. And I'd have a bag of crisps while I was waiting for it to cook or a couple of pieces of bread while you're waiting. You don't need any of that. The trouble is you get used to having it, you know. If you're used to having it, I'll oh, just have a bit of bread while I'm waiting. No, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to get off that. And once you've been off it for a while, then it's easy. It's, it's, it's making that switch to, to change a bit. And then, so we waited a couple of hours and then we had strawberries. This massive thing of strawberries I bought because it was a special offer in Waitrose again. I had that strawberries uh, with fat-free yoghurt. Completely fat-free yoghurt. Delicious. No sugar on top, none of that sugar. No cream, fat-free yoghurt. Beautiful. So onward to next week. While they were in the circle, all chatting away, they do say to you, do you want to set a target for next week? You don't have to. And I said, well, and they'd all been going, yeah, one pound, I'll lose a pound. They said, I'll lose one pound and a half, two pounds. So I said, so, so I'm saying, oh, I said, um, I think maybe two pounds. It, would that be too much or not enough? She said, so do you want two pounds? And her and a, 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 a glasses came down and nose like that. She said, two pounds, you want me to write two pounds? I said, call it three. Call it three. And everyone took a sharp intake of breath. Ooh. <laughs> it is so friendly. Let me tell you, if you ever want to go to one of those Slimmers World, just go. They make you feel so welcome. They really do and absolutely top marks them. So that's where I am at the moment. I'm hoping next week to lose another three pounds. I've set myself that target. Now, this week... I'm not going out to dinner anywhere. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't like going out to dinner, to be honest, anymore. I just find it so difficult. Well, I go in somewhere. Oh, I don't like that. I'd much, and this, you know, when I go on holiday now, because I go caravan holiday, I take on my own food. I don't have to go out to restaurants or anything like that. I hate it. And you get that snotty-nosed waiter or waitress, don't you? Can I help you? Oh, no, I'd much rather be sitting home with a tray on my lap. Thank you very much. Yes. That's my today, all right? Let's say, um, let's see some of your uh, messages there, boys and girls. Um, oh, you have been typing away there, haven't you? Uh, Tony Powers with us. Hello, Tony. Roar is there. Jason Winter. Hello, Jason. Gary says, try Aunt Bess's vegetable chips, parsnip, carrot, and sweet potato. No, it's all been cooked in oil, Gary. You can't have that. The worst, I think I think as well as knocking out the oil and the butter stuff, the other thing you want to be doing is cooking it from scratch. None of this box opening anymore. None of this box opening. Hello, Michael. Nice to see you, sir. Michael Dalton says, I put skinless chicken breasts, carrots, potatoes, garlic, tomato puree, drizzled in olive oil for about 70 minutes. How many sin points? The olive oil, uh, chicken breasts, fine. Carrots, potatoes, garlic, tomato puree. Uh, you have to find out whether the tomato puree's got oil in it. Drizzled in olive oil. It's the olive oil there that's your problem. Don't know how many. Don't know. You have to look it up, mate. Um, Tony says bacon, eggs, sausage, beans, bubbly mushrooms, hash browns, chips, tomatoes. That That's all okay, Tony. As long as you don't do it in oil. Just that spray light. That's all you want. A couple of sprays of that. Morning, Mark. Morning, Mark's with us today. Uh, Kevin says, I stopped Coke a long time ago. Um, good. Coca-Cola, very bad. All fizzy drinks with sugar, very bad. A mate of mine used to be addicted to Coca-Cola. He would have three or four large litre bottles a day. That's no word of a lie. And he, got, he put on an awful lot of weight, all down to this addiction, and lost a lot of teeth as well. It's really bad for your fizzy drinks and all that. Hello, Claire Norton's with us today. Hello, Claire. Tony Freddie Lee. Hello, Tony. Morning. Uh, Tony says onions are not good if you have an acid reflux problem, Chris. Ah, now I've got an answer to that as well, Tony. I've had an acid reflux problem for many years, which I completely ignored. Eventually, I went down to the doctor 
And he's given me, I think it's Lamzo Potty's something type of little capsules. And they tell you to have one a day. I have them as and when. So if I think I'm going to have a problem, if or if I know I'm going to have a particular meal that might cause the problem, I'll have one of those pills first and that sorts it, no problem. Now, I haven't had an acid problem for quite a number of weeks now, funnily enough, since I last, uh, if I start getting the problem, then I'll start the tablets. I'll have one, two, I'll go on for three days and then I'll stop. And the problem doesn't, hasn't come back again. I think it's sorted. I think the problem's sorted, Tony. Also, Tony, um, a, uh, a, a, a doctor told me <clears throat> if you lose a bit of weight, that also can stop your acid reflux problems. Often people who are a bit overweight have got acid reflux problems. All right. So just to help you there. Um, <laughs> Tony, I think you're quite right. Uh, none have been as as Matty. Is he all right? Do send him my love, young Matty. Um. Mark says you should do a cooking show. Well, uh, funnily enough, I was going to set up the camera today and uh, uh, record me doing my bits and pieces, but uh, I, I thought, oh, no, I can't be bothered today, you know, because it, it, it does require a lot more effort to film yourself cooking than anything else because, of course, you're moving around the kitchen and it's a bit, you know, you want to get it there and you want to get it there. I need a producer. I need a camera team in here. That's what I need. That's what I need. <laughs> No more five guys. That's right, uh, Kevin. No more five guys. Milkshakes are about 12 sins. 12 sins. There's a hell of a lot in a milkshake. Uh, Lanzo Poriel. That's right, Tony. That's the one. I think it's Lanzo Poriel. That's what I've got. Tiny little yellow capsules. Very, very good indeed. Very, very good indeed. Um, Heidi, that's not really for the um, show there, my darling. All right. Uh, tomato lentil soup. Don't know what that is. Spicy food does it for you, does it? Yeah, that'd be right. Low fat cheese, okay. Um, I can I can look it up if you want me to. I've got my phone here. What? Give me give me a brand. Give me a brand. See, I've got it all on here. I've got a brand. Hang on a minute. I got. If you give me, I've got a Slimming World app, and you just type in what food it is. So, what do you say? Low fat. Cheese, low fat cheese. Now, where would you go? Are you going to Sainsbury's? Let's have a let's type in low fat cheese Sainsbury's and see what comes up. Low uh, Sainsbury's, uh, Sainsbury's. Well, it's cottage cheese. I know what that's like. Sainsbury's carefully cheese. I don't know. That that Sainsbury's cottage cheese. No, I don't know what you are. <laughs> Laughing cow light. Okay, that do. Right, we'll look look for that. Laughing cow light. Laughing cow. Hang on. Oh dear. I put laughs. Laughing. Cow. You might be getting an inter a bit of interference on the phone. I'll keep it away from the microphone. Laughing cow light. Let's have a look. See what comes up. Doesn't always come up. Oh, there we are. Um, it hasn't come laughing cow. But it says fat spread, extra light, low fat, three sins. So it still contains it. And that's 25 grams. I don't know how much that is. It's all on here, though. You need the app. Slimming World app. That'll help you. I don't know... If you um, have to be a member to actually use the mat, obviously I'm a member, so I've got a number to type in. There is a Slimming World app, though. So you would fire up the Slimming World app and on the menu look for food. Uh, hang on, what do you look for? For food search. Then where it says search for food, you type in your item. What, what's that? V-I-O, Vio Life. Oh, I know that one, Vio Life. I've had that. That is the only vegan cheese I like, Vio Life. That's not bad at all, that, you know, Vio Life. V-I-O Life. That's a, that's a good, that's, uh, uh, you're, you're helping me there. Hang on, I can't spell it. Vio Life. Vio Life. Uh, vegan, let's try that. Vegan. It is, it is actually very nice, that Vio Life vegan cheese. 
Fire Life Cheddar Style Cheese Slices, 10 pack, 3 cents per slice. 3 cents per slice, all right? So it's still quite a lot. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. Well, mind you, five slices would be 15, wouldn't they? As a lady, you're only allowed uh, 15 a day, okay? Just to let you know that. Anyway, that's my thing at uh, Slim as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now, back to my visit to the uh, bar mitzvah dinner that we had, which was absolutely lovely on Sunday night. Now, that's why, because I mucked up some dates uh, this week, unfortunately. That's why there was no uh, karaoke at the Camden Eye this week. I'd completely forgotten that. I'd promised to go to a bar mitzvah dinner. I went to the bar mitzvah on Saturday, which I talked about on a previous show, as you well know. Uh, but the kind of dinner celebration type thing happened on the Sunday night, which was in a hotel in Cricklewood. Now, I'll tell you where it was now. Have I got my bit of paper here? No, I haven't. Do you know, I'm all over the place. Oh, is that it there? Hang on a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. There it is. There it is. It was at... <clears throat> I don't know why they chose these colours. Look at these colours where they printed on there. I can't see a thing. It was at the Crown Hotel, uh, Cricklewood Broadway. And it was very, very nice indeed. So I got to Cricklewood. I uh, had a terrible trouble parking, actually. You didn't find anywhere to park. Eventually, I parked in a residence bay. And I thought, well, Sunday, you know, 6 o'clock Sunday night, that'll be fine. So I parked that. As I went down the stairs, I, it did say half past five, but I got there about half past six. So I've come down the stairs in the hotel. Oh, is that near you, Mark? Oh, was it really? Ah. Oh. All oh, right, okay. Well, don't forget the, the, the karaoke's back this week, okay? Sunday night, eight o'clock, and it's a great night. Sunday night, eight o'clock at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. You must come along to that karaoke. It's fantastic in there. It's a bit small, just to warn you, okay? So you need to be there sort of fairly early to get yourself a seat. They're all like tall chairs in there, tall chairs and tall tables. Um, and, you know, I keep getting itchy eye. I've had this for two days now, and it's itchy right in the gland bit, you know, right there in the middle there. Dear me. I was very careful to cut, to, to wash my hands after mucking around with those chilies earlier, those dried chilies. <gasps> oh, you never want to touch a chilli and then touch your eye. Oh, that is murder, that is. I did put enough chilies in my thing, by the way. It nearly blew me head off, actually. Oh, it's lovely. Don't you can't have to. What's the point of having mild chili? Chuck the lot in, dear. I want my mouth to be burning by the time I finish that chili. Thank you. Anyway, back to the bar mitzvah. So I parked my car, went down the stairs in this hotel. Beautiful, like round stairs as you go down. Uh, and we were called into dinner immediately. And I saw my 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 very 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 good friend David Rosen. Uh, and his wife was there, Noi. Uh, his wife's from Thailand. And uh, David's story is he met his wife in Thailand, brought her back, and uh, they got married, which is nice. Uh, and it was their son's bar mitzvah, Joe, who was 13. I don't know if he was 13 on that particular day, but he was, you know, round about that day. So he's had, he's had the bar mitzvah uh, religious um, uh, uh uh, service that 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 was the day before. This is the dinner celebration. And we're called in for the dinner, and so everyone sits down, and then finally they call Joe waits outside. Okay, let's please welcome the birthday boy. Here's Joe, and he comes in on his own, and everyone's clapping and all that. And the tables were set out very interestingly. I gather this is a Jewish thing. Uh, all the children are on the top table. So Joe, of course, in the middle, surrounded by all of his friends, all on great, and of course his younger family members, all on one long table there. His mum and dad sat on a table, and then there were like lots of circular tables, and I was on a, a table with my my a uh, couple of my friends, uh, Terry and Simon, and you get talking to people, and such everyone was so nice. Uh, the chief rabbi was sitting on the table next to us. I did feel honoured. And then we started, we start off with a bit of dancing before the dinner starts coming. And we're doing those. And it will be the Jewish songs that you know, as well as some others, you know. There's that one. And there's the other one, which I like better. And we all join hands and we're going round and round. And I was holding the hand of the chief rabbi. How fantastic is that? I felt very honoured. 
I felt very, very honoured to be holding the hand of the, uh, of the rabbi. Fantastic. So I went round in circles and then the dinner came. Uh, and there was menus on the table. I've got to show you these menus. Now, please tell me <laughs> who on earth decided this colour scheme for a menu. <laughs> How the hell was anyone supposed to be able to read that? That is a picture taken of the menu, right? I tried it with a flash, but that didn't work. That, that, that's just under the, kind of the, the restaurant lights. I could barely see that. I said to Terry, my friend Terry, who's a DJ, I said, can you see that? He said, no, I can't. None of us could see this. So we kind of put it under the light. And in the end, we had to ask one of the um, uh, restaurants. There's a picture of my friend. That's that's Terry on the left there. That's his other half standing behind him there. Uh, and on the right there is Simon. Now, Simon used to have a little thing for me, didn't you, Simon? And I mentioned this. I said, well, you haven't sort of you know, come on to me tonight. Why is that? He said, well, that was when you were young. How rude is that? <laughs> so there, my friends, that was taken just outside the uh, the synagogue that we went to on in the morning, on the uh, on the Saturday morning there. So you saw the menu. Um, this is my very good friend, David. That's David Rosen on the left there. Now, as you can see, he was sweating a bit that night. <laughs> And when I took the photo, I didn't realise that you could see it as well as you could there. Now, I did try to zoom in to just the heads, but it just looked so stupid. And if I was any good at Photoshopping, David, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But uh, you can imagine that. So that's Joe's dad, David Rosen. And on the right is his beautiful wife, Noy. I mean, she is just stunning. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, Noy is a Buddhist. And she's just such a warm, lovely person. She really is beautiful. So there we are. Uh, and that was taken in the restaurant as well. All right. Uh, so dinner came. And uh, we had rice cakes to start with. Then I had this thing with white sauce and cheese on top. Um, would it be vegetable ragu? Possibly ragu, something like that. I didn't take any of the bread. There were bread rolls in front of me. I didn't take any of those. And then for pudding, we had this little apple thing with uh, uh, a dollop of ice cream on the top. So that, that was the big dinner that I, I wasn't able to count, unfortunately. I wasn't sure. So I just counted it at a maximum 25 sins for the day. Going back to the Slimming World thing. But... As I say, the day before, I'd made sure I'd had no sins. Uh, today, I've had no sins. Believe it or not, today I've had no sins. All that dinner I've done today, sin-free. The lunch, sin-free. Breakfast, sin -free. So I've had no sins today, and yet I'm sitting it. I am stuffed today after that dinner. It was massive. It's what you eat. It's how you cook it, you see. It's how you cook it. That's the thing. So that was nice. A um, little bit more dancing. Uh, I managed to have a chat with a lot of really nice people in there, lovely people, and it's a wonderful thing to see a, uh, a, a, a young person do stuff like that. Then they had the speeches, and um, uh, Joe's brothers did little speeches. One of them ended up in tears. He was saying some lovely things. There was another guy there, Lewis. I think he must have been a cousin or possibly a friend of Joe's, and he did a really funny kind of nasty speech not nasty just like things that you would say to someone that they'd be offended if they didn't know you for example i'd like to joe i'd like to thank joe for completely ruining my life and everyone's laughing he said there was me all about to celebrate my 10th birthday and the day before joe popped out and took all the attention <laughs> And it was all like that. It was a really good speech. And I managed to get a, a, a little chat with him later. And I said uh, how good he was at writing speeches. Very, very humorous and funny. It really was. Uh, so that was it. So I left there at about 10.30 and went to my car. Uh, before I got to, actually, before I left there, Terry had been out to his car. And he'd parked on a single yellow line. You know, six o'clock Sunday night. What could possibly go wrong? He got a ticket. There is it. And he showed me his ticket. He said, oh, no. I said, oh, you're joking. 
And we're all sort of, you know, sorry for him, but at the same time taking the mick out of him as well. Well, you will park there. Anyway, I left it at that. Went back out to my car, parking the par car parking um, place, and guess what? Look. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> there it is. My penalty charge notice from Barnet Borough Council. Thanks, lads. You must be desperate for the money there. <laughs> well, you're not spending it on your streets. What a dump. That's uh, So that's it, boys. He goes, that's it. I'm going to use my power as a huge television personality and say to you, don't ever go to Barnet because there's nowhere to park, even on a Sunday night. At, when was this park, When was this ticket given? Hang on a minute. When was this I've still got the ticket here. But this ticket was given to me at nine o'clock at night. Come on. Come on. Nine o'clock on a Sunday night and you... You awful people are going around putting tickets on people's cars. Do me a favour. You must be absolutely desperate for the money. And, you know, sometimes I, 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 I wind myself up about that. Fortunately, you know, I'm not poor. Uh, I just came back. I, I, I came back and from the bar mitzvah. I came back, put the kettle on, bought a cup of tea and paid it online. Get rid of it. Get rid of it, because you need the money more than me. And I hope, whoever put that on my car, I really hope something terrible happens to them. Now, I know what you're going to say. Someone's going to put a message on there. Oh, you shouldn't really say things like that. Well, I just did. Tickets on, do me a favour. Nine o'clock on a Sunday night, in not on the main road. This is in the back street. I mean, I didn't even think my car was safe. I was worried about the car being broken into, dear. Dreadful people. That was my bar mitzvah night. Not bad, is it, eh? Apart from the parking ticket. Um, let's have a look at it. Gary says, what do you mean appeal against it? There was a sign there. There was a sign there, Gary, which uh, if you saw, if you look for the sign, you saw the sign. It says you can't park here at that time. I didn't see the sign. You don't look. You would think it'd be all right at six o'clock on a Sunday night, wouldn't you? That's the way it goes. So there we are. Ah, it's Matt. Oh, it's my it's my lover, Matt. I love him. Do you know what, Matt? Someone said to me once, I think I can see your problem. And I said, why is that? He said, you always seem to go for young fathers. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Matt, Matt is my latest idol. I have to tell you, he turned up. I met him on Friday night at the karaoke and I immediately, he had my heart straight away. How do, these, how do they do it? How do they do it? He just looked, and that's it. He had me. <laughs> came, came to the karaoke. <laughs> oh, dear, dear me. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look. Just going back down a little bit there. There we are. Um, yes, I have got him as a friend now on Facebook, yeah. Uh Mark says, I've got loads of Jewish friends been to a Jewish wedding. Ah, oh, I haven't been to a Jewish wedding. I'd like to go to one of those. I really would like to go to a Jewish wedding. Maybe Joe, when he gets married, he might invite me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Tony, you can't see that menu at all. Do you want to have another look at that? Look at that menu. How can anyone possibly read that menu? Look. Hey? Yellow writing on red paper. Do me a favour, please. Oh, dear. I shall have to have a word with David. Hello to Claire, who says it's the cotton trees shredding all those fluffy bits that's making everyone's eyes itch. The pollen is landing like snow. I think it is. It's just this eye here. Keeps itching. It's been doing it for a couple of days. Matt likes the red shirt. Thank you, Matt. Oh, do you want me to red wear this? Next time you're on, let me... Next time you're done, I'll put this one on specially. Any particular outfit that you'd want me to wear, Matt? You know, red shirt, French maid's outfit little shorts, just let me know and I'll put them on for you while I'm standing on the stage, OK? Mark says Barnet Council, that's his council, and we need the money. Yeah, well, more, you, so you do need the money, so I sent it. I sent it. <laughs> Straight away, get rid of the problem, pay the money, you won't hear from them again. And I won't go, drive there again either. Stupid people. Um, <laughs> let me see. Uh, Heidi, what's Heidi? Who's stopping mid? What are you going on about, Heidi? He stopped mid flow. What have I stopped? I haven't stopped anything. What are you waiting for, Heidi? What are you waiting for? <laughs> there we are. 
Right, now, I did put on my Facebook wall, you may have noticed today, um, it was actually this evening, I did put a picture of, of a very dear friend, Diane Abbott, today. Now, if you're abroad, you might not know who Diane Abbott is, boys and girls. Basically, she is a car crash politician. She's a Labour politician, but that's neither here nor there, really. If Whether she was a Conservative, Liberal Democrat, Labour, UKIP, anyone like that, she is absolutely a car crash politician. And she doesn't seem to have a clue what she's talking about. I do not understand how she has picked up the position of Home Secretary. Now, here's a little picture of her. She looks perfectly all right, doesn't she? Perfectly normal. I think this picture was taken from one of the newspapers, actually, at a train station this morning. It looks like a train station to me. All right? And I put... I put under there something like, what do you think Diane is saying on the phone? Now, I don't think I've ever had... So many comments placed after that. There, there's loads of them. So here they come. Once again, I'll show you the picture again. We're asking people, what do you think Diane Abbott is saying into that phone? So here we go. Simon Mayhew, what's one plus one? Because she was on LBC once uh, being interviewed by the excellent host, Nick Whose, whose name, whose surname is gone from me at the moment. Nick, someone or other, isn't it? Nick. Nick. And he was asking her about figures, how much it would cost to have so many policemen, and she didn't have a clue what was going on. So that's why Simon said that. What's one plus one? Paul Dow says, Teresa, I know a good removal firm. Having a little dig at our Prime Minister at the moment. Paul, Paul also says... Paul Dale also says, Teresa, perhaps it's good for you to put your furniture in a strong stable. <laughs> nice one, Paul. Bag of chips says she's on the underground. How did she get a signal? <laughs> At which Martin says she might be like me on Virgin or EE. Apparently they get to, if you're on Virgin or EE, you can get an underground signal. Did you like that? Did you know that? Uh, Scott Bruton. Scott's a lovely lad. He used to be on, the, he was on X Factor uh, a couple of years ago. He said, hi, is that Rillian? <laughs> Rillian? Paul McIlfroy says, hello, is this the Chris Redden talk show? I like that one. I'd have her on here. She needs her own comedy show, that woman. There must be something she's good at. She'd be good at dry comedy. That's when uh, com comedians, they tell jokes and they don't smile or laugh. They've just got that serious face. I don't dislike Diane Abbott. I really don't. But what on earth is she doing, doing that job? I reckon, I, I, I reckon I'd quite like to have a little cup of tea with her. I would. I'm not saying that as a joke. I would sit down and have a cup of tea with her. Not a biscuit, because I'm on the slimmer's world. She can have a biscuit if she wants. But not a job as home secretary. Are you serious? Craig says, help, someone's taking a photo of me. These are the comments from people that I've asked them. What do you think Diane Wabbit was saying into that phone? Mark Alston says, number 33 with rice and number 54 with chips and chucking a free fortune cookie. <laughs> Paul Adamson says, I've got a headache. <laughs> a racist headache. Yeah, some of the stuff she comes out with is actually quite racist, isn't it? Um, Elaine says, no way, coffee. Is it a real word? Coffet. Coffet. I still don't know what a coffet is. Hello, Ethan. Says, I desperately need to get a clue. Where can I get one? <laughs> Helena says, Boris, I'm in the shite again. Are you? <laughs> Mark says, saying yes, I'll have a large pizza. Oh, you are awful, some of you. Simon Keane says, Chris Tarrant from Millionaire, you say. What can I do for you? We have your friend Jeremy here stuck on £64,000. He needs your help. OK, Chris, far away. I'm handing you to Jeremy. Diane, Jeremy, here. How many police officers do we need? 
Is it A, a hundred? Is it B, a thousand? Is it C, eighty thousand? Or D, three hundred thousand? I know this, Jeremy, is a hundred, uh, hang on, no, is it def O, B, uh, hang on, go for C, Jeremy, uh, no, that's right, A. Jason writes, is it Sky or BBC News Studio I'm going into now? That Kay Burley wasn't very nice to me just now. <laughs> Rod Brown says, sorry, got the wrong number. Wanted the Chris Reardon show. <laughs> I wouldn't give her a hard time. I wouldn't do politics, you see. I'd ask her how she grew up and all that. What her life was like before. I'd completely say, well, I don't want any politics. Let's just sit here and have a bit of a chat. That's what I'd like. So much Theresa May, I'd love her to I'd love to talk to her on the show. Not about politics though, about how she got into it, what she wanted to do as a little girl, what her life was like. As a vicar's daughter, she was a vicar's daughter, wasn't she? <laughs> Jeff Gurney. Hello, is that the Samaritans? <laughs> Nikki Sinclair, I'm on my way. What do you mean I can't do the interview, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Billy Watkins. Hi, Jeremy. This is my first Tinder date. Where did you say we should meet? <laughs> I'll open the phone line, all right? If you want to call in, uh, you'll notice the number's a bit bigger now. Okay, I've made the number a bit bigger for you. If you want to call in, it's open. 020 8144 3477. 020 8144 Stephen Eklett. It's the man behind with his hand over his mouth that is more intriguing. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the photo. I should have read that first, shouldn't I? Martin Rutherford says, This lady shave just won't work. It's got a ringing sound to it. <laughs> and there's so many more. Ray Reynolds says, Do you need a wicked queen for the Empire ha Hackney Panto? <laughs> Oh dear, and there's a load more. If you want to have a look on there, um, just just go on my Facebook wall. If you're not on my Facebook, then it's facebook.com. Uh, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, and you can see that post there. Okay, it's just a picture, as I say, of Diane Abbott and the various comments that uh, people have made there. All right, 020-8144-3477 is the phone number if you want to call in now. Uh, I'll only, oh, do you know it's 10 past, how long have I been chatting for? Gosh, a bit longer than I thought. Ah, oh, we've got a call there. Hello, Heidi, how are you? Oh, have I got it? Hello, Heidi. Hello. Ah, oh, there you go. All right? Yeah. I can't get your thing out of the way. There we are. Talk again. You can't get my thing out the way. <laughs> the, 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 a little window came up, but it came <coughs> over the meter that I looked to see that the sound don't go too high. Otherwise, that it distorts at the other ominous, end. That sounds a bit ominous, Hey? That sounds a bit ominous. You can't get my thing out the way. <laughs> mm. Well, that's one of those things. How are you, Heidi? What are you calling in about, darling? Your, your, um, your um, adventure this afternoon. All right, can you just can you just turn my um your speaker down in the background there? I can hear myself coming back at me, darling. With um, with Ronnie. Eh? Your adventure with Ronnie. Oh, our little he trip was... out to the shops today. Ghastly yeah, people, dear. Awful. Off. There were awful people walking around there. Or there were some some quite nice lads in grey tracksuits. We quite like to look at those sometimes. No, it's not that. It was just that he was, he was going, he was putting all the shopping in the back of the car and he was going, well, you can help me. <laughs> and you were going, well, no, because this broadcast is more important than your shopping. <laughs> and so it is. <laughs> I wouldn't turn my back on my loyal viewers. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Oh, dear. Yeah, we did a little live broadcast on the car. You remember I said I was going to get a car... <clears throat> a, a phone holder for the car. Well, I've got one now, and it's actually really good. I managed to find one at Halfords. See, I, I used to, I've ordered three or four off Amazon, and they're just completely and utterly useless. So you've got to go into a shop and, like, feel it and try it, you know? And I did, and it was, I think it was about £8.50 from Halfords, and it sticks to the windscreen, and it's just solid. It won't come off, so I'm quite pleased with that. So we tried that out today, because I want to do a couple of, um, you know, like those carpool karaoke things? 
I'd like to do a couple of those with a couple of people. Uh, so that's why I wanted the holder, and we were trying it out today. So the next thing I'll do, I'll, I'll put um, I'll put a backing track on a on a on a memory stick and play that in the car and sing along to that, and we'll see how that comes out. That, that's the next thing to do. Always looking for the next thing, Heidi. Always. Well, thanks for calling in, darling. Oh, is that it then? All right then. You are. Um, well, unless you've got something else to say, have you? You went quiet. No, no, no. Um, because I want um, I want someone else to phone in. I want to, to give someone else a chance to phone in as well. Um, oh, I doubt anyone else will call in now. It's too late now. They'll all be. They're probably all drifting off now, listening to my voice. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you message me about Joseph? Well, there isn't anything to tell you, darling. Uh, what, let me tell people what that is. Uh, one of our friends died uh, last week, um, and he's an American. He's very young, actually. Four, I think he was 40. Uh, we're not quite sure what happened, are we, darling? So I haven't got any any information. Maybe you should message his mother. I think her name's Jan. Am I right, Jan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, message his mum, Jan, and see, you know, I mean, I personally wouldn't do that, but if you want to, send her a message and see what she says. Because I haven't, I didn't speak to him on the phone that long ago. No, no, me too. Uh, he actually rang in the show a little while ago, a couple of months ago, one of the late night shows. Yeah, Joe, nice bloke. Really nice bloke. Yeah, yeah. You would give me a cuddle. Well, nothing else you can do, is there, darling? It's done. Oh dear. Okay. All, All right, right, Heidi. Oh, Chin up, darling. There's, there's nothing else you can do, my darling. Um, no, no. As I say, I personally wouldn't message his mum and ask him, but you could if you wanted to, I suppose. I think it might be a little bit disrespectful, I don't know, to do something like that. I know it's he's it's, it's kind of wanting to know what happened, but, uh, but perhaps if you kept an eye on his wall, there might, might be something come up on there at some point. Usually a member of the family will put something on there. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like when um, Stephen Geller died. I yeah. had to take Stephen Geller off my, off my Facebook. Who was that, darling? Stephen Geller. Stephen Geller. Who's he? He's a um, DJ that started um, Body Shakers in uh, Roxhall. Oh, I don't think I know him, darling. Sorry. He's a really good DJ. He died really as well, DJ. did he? Yeah, yeah. He, he died, yeah. And uh, someone else died. Another friend of mine died as well. Yeah. So I haven't taken him off my Facebook either. Yeah. Well, um, we knew we knew we knew Joe when he was um, uh, eight, actually I think he was probably underage coming in that bar I was DJing in, wasn't he? Uh, God, I think was probably I about Joe was sixteen 15. or seventeen at the time, and he used to come in a bar where I DJed at called uh, Harpo's, which was in Ellscourt, yeah. some time ago, and we became friends uh, like like a lot of them in there. And uh, we, we, we remained friends for some years and uh, lost contact. And then, of course, Facebook brings everyone back together again from from time. But I hadn't seen him for about, for about 12 or 13 years. I think I think the last time I saw him was somewhere in East London. Um, now and again, we'd send a message backwards and forwards. And once he called into the show just a few months ago. I can't, I, I'll, I'll see if I can find the... Um, uh, the the show that he was on and perhaps put a, put a link up there or something like that. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. Okay, doke Heidi. Mm-hmm. Have a nice evening, darling. All right, I'm going to listen to the rest of the show now. All right, all right my love. Sweet dreams. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye now. A couple of other people joining us this evening. Uh, greetings to David Hunt. Greetings, David. Welcome along. Are you coming at Camden Ife Sunday? David, if you're coming along now, my friend, Okay. Cam tonight, 8 till 11 o'clock. You'll like it there. Mark wants to do carpool karaoke. You're on, Mark. You're on. Okay, you're on with that one. Once I've tested it out, we'll see how we get on. And um, we'll do that with you. Another call coming in. Mobile phone. Don't know that one. Who is it, please? Oh, no. Lost that one. Did we lose that one or did you hang up? I'm not quite sure. Try it again, whoever that was. Um... Ah, oh, Tony's up for the carpool karaoke as well. Oh, we're pouring in now. Excellent. Andrew Hunt says he enjoyed the live singing last night. Are you was watching the um uh, the karaoke stream, were you? From Central Station. There'll be another one on Friday, OK? Another one on Friday. Uh, it starts at half past eight on Friday. Eight o'clock on Mondays. Half past eight on Fridays is our live streaming karaoke. They're both from Central Station 
in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. And of course, uh, we also do a live sh- uh, live stream from uh, the Camden Eye. That's on Sunday night from eight o'clock. OK, 020-8144-3477 if you want to call in now. Nice and quick, though, because I'm going to disappear soon. Hello to Shania. You're up late tonight. Shania's on the Isle of Wight. Greetings, Shania. Um, good. There we go. Right. Ah, Gary's up for the up for the karaoke as well. All right. Now, well, I'll I'll announce it. I'll put a a a, a note up on my Facebook wall when I'm about to do that. Okay, and um and then we'll uh, we'll arrange. Perhaps I don't know. I don't know how we'll do that. Actually, perhaps uh uh that here's the thing. I'll give you a free lift home. If you're at my karaoke, what we'll do is give you a free lift home. And then on the way home, we'll do, oh, it might be dark then, mightn't it? Well, I don't know if it'll be bright enough. I'll have to try it out with my car lights as well. And we'll, uh, we'll do that. And that'll be a little bit of a bit of a laugh and put the show on here. All right. So we're closing the phone lines now, boys and girls. If you try and call in now, as in now, and shut, uh, you'll get an answer phone. OK, you'll get an answer phone. And you may be charged for the call. It's a local London number, though. That's my number. Let's do the birthdays. Um, yesterday's birthdays. Now, where has that gone? Do you know, I'm in such a mess in here at the moment. I'm just, I'm not very good at organising stuff. It's just stuff everywhere. There we are. Oh, I got this as well. I meant to show you this from the Bar Mitzvah. This comes from uh, the boy. Uh, on your head be it, it says Joe's Bar Mitzvah, 3rd to 4th of June, 2017. So I've got this to keep. It's good, isn't it? I so I think it's called a capper. I'm not out sure about that. A capper, that's it. Uh, Matt, you can do it. Would you want to sing with me, Matt? Matt, we can do endless love and gaze into each other's eyes, Matt. Can we? Uh I, I don't know. Have you got a girlfriend, or are you, or, or, or is it just? Um, I I don't know if you've got a girlfriend or not. Have you? I, I mean, is there any chance for me at all? David, I can see you, dear. Boo to you too. Boo to you too. Yes, so we've got about five people who want to do the carpool karaoke now. We'll have to think of another name for it, though. We can't call it carpool karaoke. What can we call it? Chris's karaoke. Something like that, maybe? Yeah, I think that's all right. Okay, birthdays yesterday first. These are yesterday's birthdays. These are Tuesday's birthdays coming up. Robert Deal. I do hope you're well, Robert. It's been a, a, a bit of a while since we saw you, sir. Uh, 65 years. Yeah, I didn't think you were 65, honestly. I'm not just saying that. I didn't think you were 65 years old. So happy birthday to uh, Robert. Um, yes, Gary, that is correct. That's why we got someone else in the car to do the singing, dear. Not me. Uh, happy birthday, Robert, 65 today. Ezra Isaac is 33 years old. Sorry, that's yesterday. Ezra Isaac, 33 years old yesterday. Happy birthday. Chris Harris. Hello, Chris. 46. Happy birthday, Chris. David Grant. David Grant yesterday. Richard Rhodes yesterday. Hello, Richard. I haven't seen you for a while. And Scott Allen Jones. They were all um, yesterday's birthdays. And today's birthdays, gang, it's Wednesday the 7th of June. Today's birthdays coming up. Tommy Flynn, um, who pops in and out of the show now and again. Happy birthday, Tommy. All right for today, sir. Uh, the lovely George Brown, 21 today. Hello, George. That's uh, my, one of my nephew's very good friends, George Brown. I've seen him a couple of times. He's a good laugh. He popped along to the Camden Eye karaoke. You might have seen him on the live stream. Uh, there was my nephew with a hat on. And um, my ne- my nephew had pink shorts on. Honestly, I mean the straight boys look camper than the gay ones now. That is a fact, and I am totally correct in that. Ding, the, <laughs> the straight boys look camper than the gay boys now. This has been going on for some time now. They do. I mean, you should have seen Matt, who's with us tonight at Central State. You've never seen anything so camp in all your life. Oh, dear. Anyway, happy birthday, George. 21 years old today. He sung a song. Now, what did they do? They did Chelsea Dagger because they're both Chelsea supporters. Uh, so they did Chelsea Dagger at the karaoke at uh, the Cams and I. They came down from um, uh, Lincolnshire, actually. They they were supposed to see the Chelsea parade, but it was cancelled because of all the blooming terrorist stuff happening. So they, they popped into my karaoke. On the way. It's always, and Jimmy's done that three times to me now. He just turns up. 
when I don't know. And he just stands in front of me. All right, how are you? And there's my nephew standing in front of me. I'm very proud of my nieces and niece and nephews. I really am. I really, really am. I love it when they turn up. George is, is I don't know if he's your, are, are you Jimmy's best friend or just close friend? I'm not quite sure. Happy birthday, George. George did all the singing. George did most of the singing, I must say. Yes, happy birthday, George. Uh, Kurt Luke is 26 today. Happy birthday, Kurt. Uh, Mikey White. Hello, Mikey. Long time no see. Happy birthday, Mikey. Danny Williams. Happy birthday, Danny. Uh, Gerald Frank Patterson. Saw you on the television the other day, Gerald, on the um, HIV programme, wasn't it? Fantastic. Excellent programme. Happy birthday, Gerald. Um, Charlotte Joe Hanbury is 30 years old today. Charlotte Joe, I think I know you from the Golden Lion in King's Cross when we were there a number of years ago doing Bingay and karaoke there, wasn't it? It's must, that's got to be about six or seven years ago. Happy birthday. And Maz Delaney, 33 years old. Happy birthday, Maz. Uh, I don't know if you know Maz, but I did leave the Clapham place recently, so you won't see me in there uh, anymore, my darling, all right? But happy birthday to you as well, Maz. So let's do the song, and then I'll finish off with your final messages, gang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right? Happy birthday, boys and girls. And uh, also, I'd like to mention Gwen Corn's birthday tonight. Gwen Corn's birthday. Uh, Gwen was a wonderful, wonderful um, lady who just walked into, I think it was the Black Cap, actually, when I was doing karaoke at the Black Cap. One day, this um, she was elderly then, actually. An elderly lady walked in and introduced herself to me, and she says, I've come to do the karaoke. And we remained friends right up to the very day she died. Um, she was such a lovely, lovely warm person never had a bad word to say about anyone and some of the stories she used to fancy um essex david essex she's she used to love david essex and she was never ill and then she got this dreadful cancer and i popped up to the hospital to see her a couple of times and then uh, unfortunately we lost her so it would have been gwen's birthday today and as i say such a lovely lovely person gwen was so happy birthday to gwen if you're up there, darling, all right? Uh, let's finish off on uh, some of your messages. Oh, just to let you know, uh, tonight is Wednesday night tonight. I'll be hosting a quiz night tonight. That's at the King's Head Theatre Bar every Wednesday, 8.30 to 10.30, okay? It's very, very easy going. It's, it's not serious. I don't do serious. It's boring and old, and I don't want to be either, okay? So join us tonight <coughs> if you're around. My nose is incredible. Can I just blow my nose? <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, dear, dear. Tonight and every Wednesday, join us for quiz at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. It's completely free to play. And the prize is a 30, a £30 bar tab is the top prize. Second prize is a bottle of wine. OK, that's tonight. Uh, let's say goodbye to some people. Final messages coming up here. Tony says you never answered my call. No, I've closed the lines. You must have called in before I closed them. Literally, I, I, I click, click, and they're closed. It doesn't ring anymore. I can't see it anymore. It's, it's gone off the screen. All right, so once the lines are closed, that's it, mate. Sorry about that. You've missed, you missed your chance. The opportunity, you see? You've got to grab opportunities for a while there, dear, dear. You had the opportunity, and you blew it. Matt, your opportunity is still here. It's still sitting here in front of the screen. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Gary says, uh, by the way, are there any chance the Black Cat may get a reprieve? We like to think so, Gary. There are people working behind the scenes all the time trying to get the Black Cat opened. There's a little group that go down there um, every Saturday, I think it is. Oh, I've, that's, I've, take that phone off there, there we are. Uh, there's people that go there every Saturday and I've got this little thing going outside the pub all the time I'd like to think yes in reality I'm not so sure I'm not so sure okay so you never know you never know I'm glad you enjoyed the karaoke Matt very pleased uh, very pleased about that um 
The UK talk karaoke. Uh, nah, Mark, that's a bit long-winded. We'll have to think of a name for our little karaoke session, OK? All right. Uh, right, I think we're done there. Uh, Kingdom Car Karaoke. No, Kingdom... Kingdom Car Karaoke, Car Karaoke. No, I don't know. Don't know. I can't, I can't think of a name for that. Can't think of a name for that. All right, we're going to disappear now, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much for watching and listening to the show today. <clears throat> also, thank you very much to those of you that um, share the show on your wall. That's very much appreciated. I know some of you do it while it's live. Some of you do it once it goes up as a recording. Now, if you are watching the show live, don't forget, once we finish, it kind of disappears for a few minutes and then it reappears as a recording and stays up on my Facebook wall if you want to show anyone there. Have a lovely sleep this evening. What's it now? 1.30 in the morning. I think I might have another cup of tea and then I'm going to go to Betty Bye Byes. Go do some, what, do, what do you want? A blooming um, lullaby? Go on in. Go to sleep, go to sleep. La da 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 da. Good night, everyone, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye now.